Active record and active relation are the part of the Rails framework that's going to power our models. So before we begin coding our models, let's first get a big picture understanding of what active record and active relation are. First, what is active record? Active record, when it's written all lowercase as two separate words, refers to a commonly used design pattern for working with relational databases. It's not Rails specific. You can use the active record pattern in a number of different languages. It's just a way of designing object-oriented software. Active record, when it's written as one word with a capital A and R, refers to the Rails implementation of the active record pattern. Most times you can use the two terms interchangeably, but I think it's still helpful for you to understand the context and to know the difference. What the active record design pattern does is it allows us to retrieve and manipulate database data as objects in an object-oriented way, not just as static rows of data. If you've ever worked with database data as rows, you know that it can be very cumbersome to try and pull back the right data that you want, to manipulate it, and then write code that will resubmit that data to the database. Instead, active record makes our objects intelligent. They understand the structure of the database, and they know how to interact with it. What that means more concretely is that our objects not only contain data, but they also have code in them that tells them how they go about creating, reading, updating, deleting rows in the database. And therefore, our objects can be easily manipulated and saved back to the database with just a few simple commands. Just listing out the examples doesn't really demonstrate the ease of use of working with active record as opposed to working with rows, so let's take a look at a little bit of code so that you get a better feel for it. I start out by setting the variable user equal to a new instance of the class user, which is going to be an active record class. Next, I set the attribute for first name equal to Kevin, and then say user.save. And with that one simple command, I've now written an SQL insert statement and inserted the row in the database. This is a much easier way to do it than actually writing the raw SQL. And that's especially true once our objects become much more complicated than this. The next thing I did was I set the attribute last name equal to Skogland, and then I said user.save again. Well, guess what? It knows this time, instead of doing an insert statement, it knows to do an SQL update statement because the active record object keeps track of the fact that this object has already been stored in the database for me. So it not only constructs the SQL for me, but it can actually make choices about what kind of SQL to write when. And then there's the last statement I just said user.delete, and doing that writes an SQL delete statement that deletes it from the database. So with just these few simple commands, I can work with my database data in a very object-oriented way that's very easy to use and let the objects handle writing all of the SQL statements that it needs to get the job done. And that's what I mean by objects that are intelligent. Next, let's talk about what active relation is. Active relation is new. It was just added in Rails version 3, and it's often referred to as a rel, short for active relation. What active relation is, is an object-oriented interpretation of relational algebra. Now, the odds are very strong that you are not an expert in what relational algebra is. So let me put it a different way. It simplifies the generation of complex database queries. It allows us to write small queries, which are chainable together, like most Ruby objects. It takes care of handling complex joins and aggregations and uses efficient SQL to do it. And it handles the timing of when our queries run. Our queries don't execute until we actually need them. Active relation is going to be used heavily by active record for queries and for managing the relationships between our objects. So active relation, you can think of as sort of the underpinning of active record. Active record sort of sits on top of it. Active relation mostly lives behind the scenes, but it's going to be important to understand conceptually what it does. Let me give you an example to show you how simple it is to construct queries using active relation. Now, we'll talk more about the query syntax in detail much later in the chapter, but this will at least give you a flavor. In the first line, I've said, all right, I want all users where the first name is equal to Kevin. And then in the second line, I've added to that query construct saying, well, and also that query should be ordered by the last name and limited to five. And then in the third line, I say, oh, and also include the articles that were authored by this user in the search returns. So we also are going to want that back. So what I want you to see is that it breaks our queries down into very discrete segments and allows us to chain them together it allows us them to add to them as we think of more things. And then in the end, it comes together and it writes the best SQL that it can. Now, the example I have below is probably not the SQL that it would write. This is SQL that I wrote based on what I think it would do. It would do something like this. So your results would almost definitely be different than this. But this gives you an idea of how it constructs SQL based off of these very simple little bits of queries that all get strung together.
And when we start joining lots of tables together and we start aggregating data and doing very complicated things, Active Relation will handle all of that complexity for us and it will never become much more complex than what you see at the top there. All right, now that you have the big picture in your head, let's get our hands dirty working with our models.